Well, it's that time of the week for Sterlow's wrap-up. We're done. The regular season officially over. Now we're into finals football, so we're not officially done, Peter Sterling. <laughs> but amazing to think, here we are, one month of footy left. It is, James. And, and you've got to say, it's, what a, a different finish to the season as well. Mm. We're, our top eight, six points clear of the West Tigers, yeah. who finished 12 and 12. Now, probably eight out of the last 10 years, that would have got them into finals football. But this particular year, six points away from actually being in that top eight. So uh, a different look to our competition later at the end of 2018. It certainly is. And you think about the fact it's only two points between first and eighth uh, in that top eight. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's never been that close. Uh, remarkable. The way the round kicked off too. Uh, <laughs> Well, the South Sydney Rabbitohs, uh, they wanted to flex their muscle and they certainly got the chance to do that after a couple of losses. 51 points to 10 against the West Tigers and they come in with plenty of confidence to finals football, Pete. They looked really good after a sort of up and down last couple of weeks, but um, so after some early resistance from the West Tigers, probably the first half hour this was a contest, but when South Sydney started to get the ascendancy, then they really went on with that. It's a big scoreline and, boy, it's a confidence builder going into whatever is to come these next couple of weeks. But every player, I thought, for South Sydney across the board played really well. Their forward pack were excellent. Burgess brothers, outstanding. The only concern coming out of this game was that Sam Burgess didn't finish the game, left with a little bit of a, a hamstring strain. They need him on the paddock, obviously. Sutton was outstanding. And I just thought with their back line back together, that their, their best starting back line that's been so strong this year, they just looked much more fluent. Uh, there was a real rhythm to them. The key for me, in so many ways, Cody Walker, the 5'8". They work their numbers really well and, and they seem to create overlaps on both sides of the field. And it's Cody Walker who provides that. He is constantly moving from one side to the other. He's never still. He wants to be where the football is. He's a really instinctive type player, which suits this South Sydney side because it gives them that, that ad-lib play that a lot of other clubs don't boast. So I thought on a really... Good night, strong night for the South Sydney side. Cody Walker was a real star, but boy, there was a good support staff. Yeah, so one of the finalists looking very handy there. Uh, the same scenario, really, the following night, the early kickoff. The Warriors, uh, they wanted to head into finals football with a win. They did that 20 to 16 over the Raiders, and an, an ominous uh, rival now for the Panthers this Saturday. Yeah, it's a decent win against a side that had some great form behind them. Obviously, the Canberra Raiders in the last couple of weeks have knocked over both South Sydney and the Roosters. So that was pretty good form to take across the ditch. And this wasn't a comfortable win by any stretch of the imagination, but it does continue some good momentum for the Warriors who have won four of their last five now. It got very, very tight at the end of this game. In fact, the Canberra Raiders were denied on a couple of occasions these tries here, which went upstairs and they're very, very tight. There, was, there, was, there were quite a few looks at this from the bunker and... Either one of these decisions, if they'd have gone the Green Machine's way, probably would have won them a game. Again, getting over the line there, but that one was denied because of the obstruction. And Sam Williams denied on, on that occasion. So very tight at the end there, but the Warriors found a way to get it won. Maybe in the past they would have got beaten in that one, but... They are kind of the, the silent achiever to some degree coming mm. into this last month of football. Uh, straight after that, we were in Melbourne for this one on nine. The Melbourne Storm uh, with one hand on the minor premiership looking to wrap it up, but going down 22-16 to the Penrith Panthers. And a lot of player power, star power out of that Melbourne Storm side. We saw the late scratchings, Brodie Croft, Cameron Munster joining Billy Slater and others. Yeah, probably seven of their best 17 mm. unavailable for this one. And maybe that takes a little bit of gloss away from the Penrith victory, but not really in my mind. I, I, this was such an important game for Penrith after seven ordinary weeks. Now, I know that you know they'd won three or four of those, but they hadn't played well in that two-month period since Origin Football. So this was key. It was so important. They gave away 11 penalties in the first half. They were behind against a team that they've never beaten at Amy Park. Seven visits there. They'd never had success. They've lost 17 of their last 18 against the Melbourne Storm. So historically, they've been their main stumbling block. But in the second half, they turned things around. They got their discipline back. And I thought they showed some really good form. Wonga Blake, outstanding to the left side alongside Kickow. They're going to be two of their go-to men come finals football. And I thought Fisher-Harris... Was, was back to his best and they played with more aggression, the Penrith team. And that's what I kept, the word I keep using for Penrith because at their best, whether they've got the football or whether they're defending, 
when they play with aggression, they are a really, really tough football team. And we saw evidence of that certainly in the second half down in Melbourne. Yeah, the Melbourne Storm. Uh, so a slip up in their pursuits of the minor premiership. But as Saturday kicked off, uh, with all eyes turning to the Roosters, later in the evening, the earlier match was in Newcastle. Old boy days for the Knights. Uh, 24-14, the Dragons, after being absolutely blown off the park by the Bulldogs on the previous Sunday. A 10-point win they needed ahead of their finals campaign. Well, if Penrith were under pressure going into this weekend, <laughs> St George Illawarra oh, yeah. Dragons were so much under the microscope, and rightly so. Their, their game has fallen away, certainly since Origin. Although a guy like Tyson Frizzell has been fantastic, so I don't know if there's too much of an excuse there, but they just have lacked confidence. And this game was an unusual one. It, it didn't ri rise to any great heights. And Newcastle, even without Caelan Ponga, were going to be tough opposition. Their form's been good of late as well. But it was like the Penrith Panthers went back and thought, OK, we need, to, we need to just build our game slowly, step by step, baby steps almost. And that was the case in the first half. And then we saw them a little bit more adventurous in the second half. So they built their confidence up, went on to win the game um, and a really important win for them. You know, it was one that they, they desperately needed just to, to get the belief and faith back in what they have to offer. Now, having said that, we have a look at this try or no try with... Under 10 minutes to go, as you can see, six, just over six minutes. Matt Dufty loses the football. It, it apparently or seemingly came off Jack Cocker's, Cogger's leg. And you thought, well, hang on, it's play on here. Now, this would have put Newcastle in front with the conversion. And I think if that had been the case, they'd have gone on and won that game. Jack Cogger was ruled to have knocked on, rightly so. Just came off his, his hand slightly forward. It was the right call, but a huge call. And I wonder in the weeks to come how much we'll look back on that call as to maybe turning around the fortunes of the Big Red V. Yeah, and they got their hands full Suncorp on Sunday against the Dragons. Uh, look, let's go to the match after that. A sellout on the Gold Coast. Usually for two of the competition's battlers, that wouldn't be the case. But North Queensland getting the chance to say goodbye to Jonathan Thurston with a 30 points to 26 win. Yeah, over 26,000 fans up there to do so. Wow. The home side didn't get as much applause as the opposition team when they ran out. That's very unusual. <laughs> um, but it was all about Jonathan Thurston. And for a long time in this game, the Gold Coast Titans, they, they weren't playing the game. They led 18-6. Everyone's going, no, hang on. This, this, this isn't the way it's supposed to happen. This is all about Jonathan Thurston. And the great thing is that for JT, he was pretty much the catalyst that turned things around just the way it should be in his last ever game. Uh, put the kick over the top there for Gavin Cooper to score, which was Gavin Cooper's ninth try in consecutive weeks. Sets the record now. And what an effort that is to get a try every week for nine weeks. Uh, the partners in crime at their best there. Uh, this was all about Jonathan Thurston, and rightly so. And he was, he was such a big part of the victory. Uh, you can see here that the pictures. It was a, another emotional event for him, and that, that's got to be you know wearing in itself for, for Thurston coming into these last is. games. What about that <laughs> on Ryan James? Ryan James. And he just he was able to encapsulate the career of Jonathan Thurston into certainly the last 40 minutes of football, and that's what we all wanted to see. And even you for a Gold Coast Titan fan going home, yes, disappointed in the result, but I think you'd have been joyous in the fact that you were there to see this final game. Um, and he will be missed by, by all rugby league fans, not just Cowboys. Certainly was. Great scenes there at Seabus Super. And well done to all the fans getting there uh, for Jonathan Thurston's final game in the National Rugby League. The later kickoff on the Saturday night, the Roosters knew after the Melbourne Storm slip up, Pete, they needed to win by 27 or more against the Eels. And in the end, 44 points to 10. And job done. Minor Premiers. Yeah, covered it fairly comfortably, didn't they? And uh, great effort from all players and, and coaching staff out there. Trent Robertson with this game, I think 155 mm. matches in charge of the tri-colours, the, the most ever. And that's, that's, that's a feat in itself when you consider some of the coaches that have been at that club. Uh, great effort from Robinson. Um, and a good, good performance from his side here. They, they had that covered fairly comfortably. They were aided by a really inept performance from the Parramatta side, unfortunately. Just token resistance there. And if you had a look at some of those tries that we just saw, especially to Ferguson, they were training runs. They really were. And against 11 men at, at one stage Yeah, too. a couple of sin binnings. Obviously, Mitchell Moses and Michael Jennings dispatched on, on occasion. So that, that made it easier for the Roosters. Not quite sure if it was the ideal preparation for them. You kind of want a, a, kind of a, a hardened hit out as your final showing. But they minor premiers, great performance from them. Um, and I still think, in my mind, they go in 
to this last month as the Premiership favourites. Third wooden spoon for the Parramatta Eels in the space of seven years. Pete, yep. how does that sit with you? Doesn't sit at all. It's, it's terrible. You know, we should be leading the way and um, there needs to be some real soul searching done in the months uh, leading up into next season. The review results will come out. I'll be really keen to find out what that reveals as to where we're lacking in not just performance on the field but everywhere. So uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult time but Parramatta have, have had a few of those of late. I thought that We'd come out of those, especially mm. after the salary cap debacle, but obviously um, there's still plenty to be done out there. All right, let's head to the Sunday action. Uh, the Sharks and the Bulldogs, knowing what Canterbury Bankstown had done to the Dragons the previous week, anything could have happened here, but Cronulla getting the job done. 30 points to 18, and they well and truly in the reckoning for another title, only a couple of years after their last peak. Well, it's arguable that they are the form side coming out of Origin football. Their last seven or eight weeks has been tremendous. And I think the most impressive thing about this performance, James, is the fact they scored six tries. Mm. Didn't kick a lot of goals, but um, that's probably something we don't associate with this Cronulla club, that they can um, you know, put sides away to that extent. Uh, and this was good opposition. The Bulldogs have been great. You, know, you mm. mentioned earlier 38-0 the previous week over the Dragons. So you know, their form has been particularly strong. And I think there were some who thought it could be an upset in this game, but never really looked to be on the case. And, and Cronulla... Um, Listening to Paul Gallen afterwards, they're a very, very confident football team. And even with some off-field dramas in relation to, again, salary cap, I think it just kind of galvanises this club and this, this playing group. They love the old siege mentality, the Cronulla they Sharks. They do it well. They've been through the ringer before. Uh, they're handling it with poise this time around too. Uh, the final round wrapped up at Suncorp Stadium. We had the calculator out for this one too. Stello, knowing that the Broncos, a win by 24 or more, uh, would get them a home final. And they did that end some with that 48-16 win over a hapless Manly C. Yeah, after um, probably 25 minutes, 30 minutes, we knew that they were going to have a home final. Um, Manly, especially when they lost Tom Trebojevic through injury, they, w- they were good in patches. I thought Cherry Evans tried hard. and thought I thought the Manly side tried hard in general. But uh, this Brisbane side, they're, they're a really good football team. And their halves, I thought, were super impressive. There's still the question. Now, they're not game managers, but so can they win a premiership with Nick Arima alongside Anthony Milford? They can. You know, th- these two players, they, they work really well off the back of a strong forward pack. Um, it wasn't ideal for the home side because they had Josh Maguire operating out of dummy half with no Andrew McCulloch, so things will get smoother there as well. But uh, they're playing some really good football. Manly, uh, tough season for them. And, and once, as I say, once... Turbo Tom wasn't there. Um, they weren't going to be able to win this game. And in fact, you know, at one stage, uh, I think if Brisbane had scored one more point, they actually moved, would have moved, finished in fifth position, mm-hmm. still got that home final. And it wouldn't have meant much except a change of opposition this coming weekend. But it's a sign of just how well Brisbane have finished the season. So we head into uh, finals football this weekend. Want to tip me some winners? Uh, yeah, look, Friday I, night, Storm Rabbitohs? I think the Rabbitohs can win. And again, that'll be based on, on who plays for the Storm. We know Will Chambers won't be mm-hmm. there. Uh, so far, Sol- Solomona, if yep. he's back, that enhances Melbourne's chances, but I like the South. The Panthers have got the Warriors at ANZ, first kick off Saturday. I'm a Panthers fan, I think oh. they can win. Uh, Roosters have got the Sharks, Allianz Saturday nights. Well, I just said in my mind, I think the Roosters are the Premiership favourites, so that they, they, would, they would win this weekend. And the Broncos and the Dragons, Suncorp, Sunday afternoon. Uh, I think the Broncos, especially at Suncorp Stadium, we saw the fans oh, up yeah. there um, this weekend. And they'll be there in droves they'll again. They'll be back in big numbers. Uh, it's it's an Im- imposing place to go and I don't know if the Dragons are playing well enough to handle all of that. It's been a fun season, people. We've got another four weeks to go. Looking forward to it. Yeah, less teams to talk about next week, yes. but more important results. September. How Cheers. good is it? Thank you, good Peter Sterling. Still a wrap up on this Monday after 25 rounds of the National Rugby League. The Rabbitohs can win. And again, that'll be based on, on who plays for the Storm. We know Will Chambers won't be mm. there. Uh, so far, Sol- Solomona, if yep. he's back, that enhances Melbourne's chances, but I like the South. The Panthers have got the Warriors at ANZ, first kick off Saturday. I'm a Panthers fan, I think oh. they can win. Uh, Roosters have got the Sharks, Allianz Saturday nights. Well, I just said in my mind, I think the Roosters are the Premiership favourites, so that they, they, would, they would win this weekend. And the Broncos and the Dragons, Suncorp Sunday afternoon. Uh, I think the Broncos, especially at Suncorp Stadium, we saw the fans oh, up yeah. there... Um, this weekend. And they'll be there in droves They'll again. be back in big numbers. Uh, it's, it's an Im- imposing place to go and I don't know if the Dragons are playing well enough to handle all of that. It's been a fun season, people. We've got another four weeks to go. Looking forward to it. Yeah, less teams to talk about next week, yes. but more important results. September. Thank Cheers. you, Thank you Peter Sterling. Sterling's a wrap-up on this Monday after 25 rounds of the National Rugby League.